It's like the first sunny day in forever. So I'm going to take advantage of it and we're going to clean my bike together. Welcome to the Unpavement. I'm Jeremy McGee and I'm a paraplegic. I've got a sweet mountain bike that gets me out on the trail, but I've gotten into trouble with it out there. So I'm on a mission to document trails for adaptive riders. finally got the motivation to clean my bike and film this episode, but was really disappointed to find out I totally blew it on recording the audio. So it's not my best work, and you're going to have to bear with me on the poor sound quality. How you doing? It's a beautiful Saturday in the neighborhood. It's like the first sunny day in forever. So I'm going to take advantage of it and we're going to clean my bike together. First things first, I need to remove everything on the bike that cannot get wet. First thing you're going to need is a five mil Allen wrench. Okay, this is awkward. I'm having trouble. Wait. Righty, tidy, lefty, loosey, right? <laughs> Come on, Jer. Get it together. And such a dropper. Oh my God. Always dropping everything. Now I had to remove those bolts in order to remove the leg cradle upholstery, which the manufacturer recently updated. The Velcro now goes along the sides instead of straps that go underneath. Now I'm always hitting rocks and things like that, and those straps were getting shredded. This is a lot better. Oh, beer. Mm. Once I get the leg cradle padding off, you can see there's just tons of debris in there. So I turn it inside out and just hit it on my wheel. You can throw these in the laundry. I've done it before. If they're really dirty, I'll do that. You can also take a wet rag and kind of open up the seams and wipe in the seams and get them really, really pretty if you have a bike date with another boy or something. Next is to grab the key and unlock your battery so you can remove it. I leave my GoPro case on my bike. It's just a lot easier taking the camera in and out of the case with the back door, then removing it every time. So when I wash my bike, I need to remove it using this tool and it's an aluminum case. So I have to unscrew it all the way. Oh yeah, always a dropper. Where's that bolt? There it is. Let's go ahead and put this here so we don't lose it. One super important thing is to drill a hole in the leg cradle so that water can drain. Okay, she's all ready. Let's get started. You don't want to use high pressure water because what that's going to do is force all the dirt and contaminants into anything that has bearings. So you want to do like a light shower rain. You can agitate the dirt with your brush and soap. This is just to get everything wet and rinse off. The only time I do high pressure is just on the tires usually when there's a ton of mud. That's about it. And then just, just get her wet. That's all you're trying to do. So the first step is just to do kind of like a once over on everything. Now my bike's really not that dirty. I 
I'll go over the handlebars. You know, the controllers are not waterproof, but water resistant. So they're okay to get a little bit wet. Make sure you just use the rain shower. Pretend your bike is in a luxurious hotel with a rain shower head, not like a Motel 6 with weird pressure that like sprays you in the eye and stuff. You gotta treat her right, man. You do wanna be pretty thorough with this. You don't wanna leave any soap residue. Voila, she's clean. Now time to clean the chain. I use the Park Tool chain cleaner. It works really good. First thing is to remove the top and then place it on the chain, put the top back on and lock it into place. I probably overdo it on the revolutions, but I kind of like just watching the chain go through the cleaner. Next, remove the top, remove the cleaner, and then clean it out and add new water and soap because you have another chain to clean. Now this is a little tricky. You'll need to remove the handle for this, Remove the top again, and then carefully place the cleaner under the swing arm onto the chain. Put the top on and lock it into place. You'll need to put the handle back on. Hold the cleaner so it doesn't interfere with the rotation of the wheel. Remove the handle, remove the top, remove the cleaner, and grab your beer. There's a hole underneath the frame for water to drain out and dirt and the cables inside there block it almost every time. So you need something like this to get up in there to drain out any water that may have ended up inside the frame. Ugh. I've kind of uh, feel along here and then you can see right where the frame has a bend in it, the hole is right there. I stick this inside and uh, there's water in there, but the angle the bike is at on the lip is not going to drain out. So I'll have to make sure to do that when the bike is on the ground. all these small crevices that you can't really get inside with the towel. And the air compressor works really good. This is when you show your bike how much you love her. Spend some time with her. Wipe her down, get all the spots off, shine her up, pay attention to her, let her know how much she's loved, make her look good. Wiping down the rims is kind of like making your bed. Your bed takes up the majority of the surface area in your room. And if it's messy, even if your room is clean, it's gonna look messy. Same with your rims. 
they take up the majority of the surface area on your bike. And if they're dirty, your bike's going to look bad, even if it's clean. So I take the time to wipe between each spoke. It makes a huge difference. And you got to wipe down that roll-off speed hub. You didn't drop 1600 bucks on this thing so that she could be spotty. Wipe her down, make her shine, and show her off. If you are a mountain biker, three products from My Lucas Oil that you need to go to mylucasoil.com right now and get are number one, their contact cleaner. This stuff is gold. It's high pressured and you just spray it on your parts, on your cassette, your chain tensioner. For this bike, the rod ends, takes off all grease, all residue. This is a this one's big time, I use this one a lot. Number two, and this is a close second, is their penetrating oil. They just redesigned the bottle so it has this flip up straw. You give a little spritzel on any moving parts, anything with bearings, the rod ends again for this bike, on the, the joints for all your shocks and your suspension. This stuff works super good. I carry a can of it wherever I go. This eats rust and prevents rust. That's big time. Rust is bike cancer. Number three is their brake parts cleaner. It's non-chlorinated. Your brakes are arguably the most important part of your bike and keeping those rotors clean is super important. If my bike makes any noise at all, it annoys me big time, especially my brakes. Spray this on your rotors and it takes care of all the contaminants that get in the pores of the metal. Now it's time for lube. I love this stuff. It's not the best lube, but it's two in one. It's cleaner and lube in one. It's like the, the lazy man's perfect lube. You just apply one drop to each link in the chain and then wipe it off and you're good to go. You cannot wipe enough. All right, she's all clean. Thanks for washing my bike with me. Doesn't she look good? I like to make the wheels spin. The wheels on the bike go round and round, round and round. Now that she's all clean, it's time to blow her off with the air compressor. <laughs> Once it hits your lips. Ah. 